My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hello, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, today I have with me Richard Charging Eagle, and he's here from Eagle Butte, South Dakota, and um, he has so much information, but welcome, Richard, <laughs> to the show. And he was at Standing Rock from the beginning, and I know a lot of people have asked, what's going on there, what happened there. And I really, I asked Richard to let us know everything from the beginning because we've heard bits and pieces, we've seen things on Facebook, but we didn't know the real story. So again, welcome. And quickly tell us where you're from again because uh, we probably have a different audience. My uh, name's Richard Chardini, I'm from uh, South Dakota. Okay, okay. And I, uh, I come from a reservation called Shine River Sioux Tribe. The headquarters of that is Eagle Beep, South Dakota. Originally born in a community called Red Scaffold, South Dakota. And that's where I'm from, and I'm here to uh, share some stories at there. And I want to hear these stories. So tell me, how did it start at Standing Rock? I heard a story, maybe you can clarify this for me. It started with Cheyenne River Sioux teenagers. and. Is that correct? Or A year ago, April 1st, it all started. The uh -huh. camp was made about first, or second, or third. It started uh, with young kids. A whole mm -hmm. bunch of young kids got together, and they're worried about the water. Mm -hmm. And nobody paid attention to these kids up until August. Uh, these kids had a, it's a sacred stone camp that they started. And these kids ran to Washington, D.C. to protest that. And of course, there's adults helping them too at that same, about that time. So it started then, it started out to be a very spiritual, cultural thing. A lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of things happened there that uh, media never did cover. Maybe, maybe they chose not to cover or I'm maybe sure they that chose that. I'm sure that was the that. case. So, so a lot of things that didn't happen, right? But we, uh, on, I remember on August 8th, our tribal chairman called me and uh, my service, veteran service officer, Robert Dunsmore, and said, uh, get the rest of the troops. You're gonna be in the front lines of this protest. So we took our veterans tent and we took all that stuff that we need and we we went up there. But other, other veterans from different tribes came to help, which was nice. Mm -hmm. So it um, started with the veterans going? It started out the okay. veterans. But again, after that, we sat idle for five day, five weeks, and they have five, four or five camp leaders. They call them the camp chiefs, and nothing happened. And, I, and all of a sudden, all the elders come to our veterans' tent and say, "We're sitting here five weeks not doing nothing. Can you veterans do something?" So we start. We started with the prayer march. We walked about a mile to the front lines with our with our sacred objects and pray and sing 
and it did that for four weeks. It's supposed to do that every day, but somewhere along the line, we have we had some non-believers or something because they they wanted to quit doing that. So when they start when they quit doing that, we start falling apart. So we go back over and we do it again, all over and over. And this was during the doing the, the walk. During the whole walk, everything, okay. eh, the whole bit. And and during this period of time, were there more and more people coming? And there, when we first started out, the location is about big as this block here, with uh, two veterans tent, and these these women made, mar marked out with a big red yellow ribbon. This is going to be a parking area, and there's. Some things Indians look for, and we didn't have enough. Place to eat and no bathrooms. Next day to maybe four days later, we have over 400 people coming overnight throughout the night. And that whole place is taken. And then I thought it was great. Towards third week and fourth week of August, that whole bottom is covered. We said 1,000 people, then somebody said, no, it's 1,200. We had 368 tribes represented. Wow. And then we wow. had 11 countries that came in, like uh, Australia, Taiwan, China, Japan, even Russia came, Sweden came, and Canada, of course they came. And they didn't come in just a few, they come in, in herds of them. But it was nice, but North Dakota got angry. All those people that flew into Bismarck, North Dakota, they find out that they're going over there. They were shunned by the community of Bismarck, the city of Bismarck. The people they that were, because they were going to, they yeah, knew they, they were, were going they to Standing yeah, Rock. Yeah, they don't want, they're going to Standing Rock, so they don't want to serve them in store, they don't want to serve them uh -huh. in gas places, they don't want to serve them oh to buy goodness. food. They, they kind of shunned them. Well, they were getting a lot of business. They, they <laughs> did, yeah, if Take they the thought money, about huh? it, they were getting a lot of business, but it, it didn't happen. So during the time that we had we had confrontation with, uh, they call it dappled security. These guys are uh, somebody, we know that some of them are rejects from that uh, black water ops that were kicked out from Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. So we had them, they're the ones that are doing the con construction. And I don't know if there's any photos, but I know there's a bulldozer with a 60 caliber machine gun on top of it. And then there's some other, there's a digger, a crane, or had a 60 caliber machine gun on top of his cab with, with the ammo hanging out. And they were doing all of this, but we were the ones that are bad guys. They get to have they weapons. They came in to fight. They came Obviously, to fight. But <laughs> when we were ready to fight, they don't want to fight. Because when we came in with 1,000 veterans, remember they put off no digging? So they, they were afraid, but they were doing it. But we had Labor Day weekend, the DAPL security brought dogs in. The one woman got her arm bit, the, the flesh was bit off. And there's some young kids that got bit, uh, bit young children got bit. Oh my God. So when we rushed up there to get them, they, they took their, well they were gonna, the wind was coming from the Northwest and the, the line was right here all the people, the Indian people are protesting. Here comes the dapple with the dogs. And they were tossing tear gas. Guess what happened? The reason why spirituality worked is when they were throwing tear gas, wind switched and then went back on them. So those dogs got nervous and they attacked their owners. Yes. <laughs> So we knew something yeah, was good, yeah. but somewhere along the line, we lost that. Somewhere along the line. But we went back up, we checked. They were, at that time, they were like nine miles from digging from where we're at. So we took out with kids and horseback. These young kids all ride horseback, paint up their horses. You paint, if you never run into a real live Indian with war paint on, you see one, you'd be scared the way they fixed themselves up, 
on horseback. And we, we took them way out there. And they marked all of it. They surveyed it. They marked it. And we, they married. So what do you want us to do? Take those stakes out. There must have been like 18 horseback riders carrying wads of, big wads of uh, yardsticks that they surveyed. Ah, and then these that was good. fiberglass poles with flags on it. They confiscated every, they brought it back and here's some souvenir. So we raced hell with all of this, all that whole time. So they had to slow them down because then they'd have to survey yeah. it again yeah, and mark it all to, up. So we had to do something to keep them, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be coming. So they, they were, as they were coming, they came so close to the highway and all the, on the highway, on the front lines on top of hill, all these people put tents alongside the highway on the other side of the fence. Because they said, we don't want no tents on the highway. And this is a Morton County Police Department. You see tents and we're gonna destroy them. So they went on this side of the fence. When they went on the east side of the fence, they brought herds of buffalo. And I know that spirituality worked because the buffaloes just kind of grazed and ate between tents. They didn't even bother the people. They just went on. Ah. Several days later, when they were coming, here's that herd of buffaloes, thousands, thousands of head of buffalo. Stampede the Morton County Police. They were running for their lives. <laughs> so there, there's something good there. Yeah. But we didn't, people didn't see it and didn't understand it. But there's a lot of things that happened that uh, we know the spirituality was, the spirits are right with us because mm -hmm. they came right over several graves. They just, they don't know what happened to them. The, the graves, the bones, we don't know where it happened, what happened to them. But they're not the only time that this happened either. They took all the buffalo out and left 15 buffalo in a corral makeshift crowd and while they were digging with the chemicals they're spilling chemicals well, chemical went into a puddle of water where the buffaloes were drinking it. and when the buffaloes drank this water all 15 died right where they're standing Aww. and that's not the only thing either they destroyed prairie dogs the, the ferrets that were that were protected they killed all of them and Did they kill horses too? And then later on, the, the, the young kids wanted to race hell with them, so they got on their horses, they painted the horses and themselves up, and they were, by that time, they have ATVs chasing these kids around. It's, I don't know what made them, they were chased them to the river. The camp is right here. Chased them to the river, so the horse didn't want to cross. So they swam back across. Several hours later, they went back to retrieve their horses. Dappled security shot all these horses, killed all of them. <gasps> they must have uh, must have had a sniper there because every one of them was shot in the head. Oh no! And they didn't think they didn't care. They just turned around and left. So that sat idle for a long time. So we start raising hell at the bridge because they they they're the ones that did it. So when we raised hell with the bridge, they brought a truck and they burnt that themselves and they blamed the protesters for burning they that truck. They burnt their own truck. Their own truck. And it's one of those big, um, the big trucks, semi truck. Oh my goodness. They burnt it and nobody didn't. Because when we crossed, they're gonna sh they said they're gonna shoot live rounds at us. So we stood at the bridge and they parked it just across the line there they burnt it. So nobody didn't, they just watched it burn. Wow. Maybe several weeks later, one of the protest cowboys came back with a semi truck and a chain and we're gonna move that. So while we were doing that, Morton County and uh, Dapple Security were shooting at us, throwing concussion, brain, concussion bombs. <clears throat> when they were doing that, they didn't come close. They were shooting across, and that's illegal. As far as I know, that's illegal. And if, when you when you fire these rubber bullets, you're supposed to ricochet them off the ground. 
and you're supposed to shoot these uh, concussion bombs straight up so it'll explode in, in mid-air. But they were shooting direct at us. So while we were hooking up this truck, my veteran service officer was hooking it up. There's one concussion bomb exploded, not too far from me, it didn't hurt him. When we hooked it up, this young lady standing over here, the concussion bomb came and landed on her arm mm. and it exploded. So the other girl, she's a Dene, and she was a security. She went to help and she got shot right above the eye and lost her eyeball. Oh, terrible. And that's on this side of the line. They weren't on the other side. So they, we took them all out and I got shot myself with the rubber bullet too, but that was a distance because it, it's just like somebody hit me with a rub, with a ball. But my, um, my tribal chairman also got his cap shot off. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh my he's, goodness. He's, but he was, he was there with his woman and it, she said, what it's like to have that tear gas? So we took her out there to experience tear gas. And <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> all that liquid coming out her nose oh, and lip and just crying. But it, all that happened, and these young kids, are, every day they go race out with them, not crossing the bridge. And they had some kind of, some of those kids chased one of them around, and they came back, they, they cornered him. They cornered this gentleman with his white truck, and he had a um, SKS loaded magazine. He fired two shots. And they chased him into the river. So he's standing right in the middle of the water, waist deep. And he, was, he shot a couple rounds at our, at our veteran officer. So he rushed him and took that. They arrested him. So he dropped a full magazine in the water. So we got that as evidence now. So uh, they can't say that they, they didn't fire at us. They did. When he took the weapon, it, it, it was oh fired. Oh, goodness. And when they took him, this gentleman that, that was from the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. And he was a nephew to the tribal chairman there. Wow. If you just, if so, you just happen to tune in, you're watching Native Voice TV. I'm talking with Richard Charging Eagle, and he's telling us what happened at Standing Rock, and it's just amazing I know we heard little bits and pieces but not in detail <laughs> like you're telling us yes it's a lot of things what about happened. the water cannons tell me about that the same night when they shot these two girls while well, all of us got shot same night when they took the truck out they, they didn't cross the bridge they didn't cross the line because they had a military Constantina wire across the razor sharp they, they didn't go past that and the Morton County Police Department and the security, the, the, the construction are so scared, they brought a water cannon. It was cold, windy and cold. I would say uh. it must have been like 60, 70 below wind chill. And they used that water to, they got everybody wet. But there again, somebody was on our side because all those people that got wet never got sick. Isn't that amazing? The, so when this is all took place, they, they, they asked the veterans, what can we do? I says, when that group of people, give them three, four hours, bring him out and bring some more out. Don't let them sleep. Don't let the security or the police department sleep. Keep raising hell. Mm -hmm. Throw snowballs at them. So they did. They made snowballs and they threw at them and they were <laughs> complaining because they were throwing snowballs at the police department. They were afraid. Here they're standing with the big rifles. Oh, my gosh. So they did that for about two, three days. And they, they played out. And did they also spray chemicals on the people? They sprayed chemicals like, like they did to where the buffaloes were drinking water. Oh. The helicopter came in. There's helicopters flying around, airplanes flying around constantly to how would you say it? You can't get cell phone. Oh, to scramble the they scramble uh, the air. Yeah, and when they the leave, frequency. Yeah, yeah, when they leave, it takes about twenty minutes to get okay, but then you can only still stay one place to take 
you call. So when they, when they were doing that, a helicopter came on the northwest side along the river, because the river was like this. A big camp is over here, and there's another camp over here, and a sacred stone camp of young kids over here. This helicopter came and sprayed something bluish green all over. So what shall we do? What can we do? It already dropped it. And there's cattle on that side. If it's going to hurt the vegetation, it will. But we never heard nothing about it, so we reported that also. I don't know what happened. And see, none of this never made the news. No, none and of you it. You didn't hear about the chemicals being spilled. You heard a little bit about the rubber bullets. Yeah. Nothing about the water cannons. But we had uh, professional veterans that came out. We had some um, Navy SEALs, mm -hmm. ex-Navy SEALs came. They had wetsuits. They went underwater. They came out while where they walked digging. They were watching them what they're doing. And they, they didn't even know what was going on. So while they're scrambling all this air, they hear, they know everything that we're doing because they get to listen uh. to it. So one day I decided to play with them. So my my phone is one of those flip, my, my, flip my, phone. my my flip <laughs> phones. My my daughters, my son said, That's that's a dinosaur. <laughs> I took it out and I start start texting. Anybody in a camp, I said, anybody in a camp have pictures of Dapple, Morton County Sheriff, addresses and pictures on them to make a visit home visit tonight and you know I put my cell phone number out there but I got to go home and I slept and I got up and veteran service officer it's my turn to go up so I said all right and here they called me when are you uh, going to make a visit to these uh, people so I'm in Bismarck right now I, I just located some houses where the police live oh yeah they said, when are you going to be there I said, I'm there already and they wanted to know what I'm going to do with them. We messed with their uh -huh, minds. Because <laughs> uh -huh. they were listening in. They were listening they in. Were, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's really uh, something. So what's the status now? The status now, we got about 180, 195 people just moved on top of the hill right now. And majority of those people left and came to Cheyenne River, west end of the reservation where the Keystone Pipeline is coming right at them. So most of these people left some of their belongings, went to Poplar, Montana to help those Indians up there fight the Keystone XL Pipeline. And some of our spiritual leaders went up there. But when they're coming, they're gonna come right on the edge of the Cheyenne River Reservation like they did to North Dakota. But we're gonna, we're gonna fight. Now, at Standing Rock, did they go, is the pipeline finished? What's, what's the status? The is there anybody there the, or are the, they? The, the pipeline through Standing Rock, regardless of the governor and president said no construction, they just kept working. Okay, that's, yeah. So every day that they put in, they're suing the construction. And they just kept going and kept going. And then when they finally gave them a go ahead to construct, they already crossed already the river done. underneath. But that's not gonna, that's not, that um, pipeline is this thick. I don't know how thick it is, but. This isn't very thick, no. this is about a half inch. And it's about this wide, about that big. One of the veterans from Standing Rock got mad and he had regular hammer, fiberglass hammer, and he hit that pipeline and it broke off a piece. <gasps> So well, you know that. Secure, huh? <laughs> so you know it's not going to last very long. So when we did study on it, we had kids, that engineers that come, we had them study it. They took it, and maybe seven years tops. That still be good oh, after seven that's years. So horrible. Not good. So what are the plans for the Keystone Pipeline coming through your reservation? Um, what can people do? What's well, we're. Shine River is going to be in charge of it. We have a very good tribal chairman that uh, really supportive of it, and he's really a good fighter. And they're still fighting. And they're still fighting. They're doing a good job. But when they come, 
we're not going to. South Dakota state governor made a made a ruling in the law that anybody any protest more than seventy people will be shot on scene. And we already have over two, three hundred people there. It's <laughs> so, ridiculous. so that's a that's a law that they passed. They just the governor, laws as they go, huh? <laughs> so the governor had the South Dakota and North Dakota governors both have money invested in these pipelines, same way with the President Trump. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why they're all right, together. They made these. They were afraid, but they're coming through. I think it'll be cheaper if they haul the crude oil, save money. But in this year, way, for the days that they're not working, the the construction workers that we we put a stop to, they got to pay over seventy five thousand a day to these construction workers, and they were losing money. After a while, they they don't pay them, so a lot of those construction workers left them. They left big messes at motels in Bismarck. Really? Worse than uh, our Indian people who always say that we can destroy motels. They did worse than that. In the whole state of North Dakota, that if you're an Indian, don't go around by yourself. And that's all they told us not to do. But China River Sioux Tribe is boycotting North Dakota. They're encouraging them to boycott North Dakota, yeah. all the tribes. Well, thank you for all of this, just a wealth of information, because we didn't get that information out here. People here were supporting yes. in any way we could, our, our Board of Supervisors, our City Council, you know, citizens here, everyone supported it, but we never got all the details. We heard bits and pieces, yeah. and you really filled a lot of those little gaps in. And hopefully next time you come to our area, you can tell us what's going on with the Keystone Pipeline, mm -hmm. what people can do to help. Um, and because I'm sure things will be taking place um, in the next you know, few months, years or so. Um, but please keep us posted. But thank you yeah. so much for joining us on Native Voice TV. And even uh, people that don't know about money to help, our tribal chairman, we, veterans told them that if they want to help, well, sending money or whatever to the tribal office so you'll know what to do with it with the campers uh, to feed them keep them yeah. so that's that's the plan that we're doing right now so the, our veterans in shine river are very active in this thank doing, you so. we we appreciate everything you've done and we're, we're we support you all the way thank you for watching us at home we'll see you next week on native voice tv good night So